return the LS to a scoring pass, and repeat the final tail series of cuts on your two boards. This completes the tail cuts. Now for the pin boards. The pin cuts are made with the stock face down on the router table. Move the LS to the first pin cut that positions the cutter outside the fence, 6B in this example. Since the pin sockets are stopped cuts, bring the shop stop just up to the outside diameter of the cutter and clamp in place. This stop setup will always produce a socket that is a little short, so we'll only cut one end of one piece at this time then adjust as necessary. Move the stock into the cut until you just touch the stock. Don't force the material against the stock. Now move from B cut to B cut until you've cut across the full width of your material. Assemble the pin board to one of the tail boards to determine how much you need to adjust the cut length. The amount that the tails protrude is exactly how much you need to move the stop away from its current position. Slide the fence scale to an easy reference, then move the stop away from the cutter an amount equal to how much the tails protrude from the pin sockets. Return the fence to the first pin cut and repeat the cuts for both ends of both pieces. Advance slowly into each cut to avoid tear out on the corner post. And as always, blow off the table between cuts, since a tiny chip between the board and fence or table can easily change your cut location or alter the fit. Assemble both pin boards to one of the tails. Then add the other tail board and drive the tails home. Try this beautiful joint on your next jewelry box project. When preparing stock for through dovetails, keep in mind that for a given cutter and joinery template, there is one and only one depth of cut that will provide a good fit. Once you've established the depth of cut for your template, thickness plane your stock down to match the depth of cut. Never raise the cutter up to match your stock thickness. We'll begin with the tail cuts. After centering and installing the template, set the fence to a scoring pass position, then clamp the carriage and slide your scale to read zero under the hairline cursor. Clamp the right angle fixture to the fence and table, then clamp the two shorter pieces of stock with a backing board to the faceplate. You can use your centering board as the backing board. Securely tighten the wooden hand screw clamp, then remove the spring clamp.
make a scoring pass cut, then advance to the first template mark in front of the zero position in one or two passes. Once you've reached the first mark, 5A in this example, move the fence from one A cut to the next until you have cut across the full width of your stock. After completing the cuts, immobilize the right angle fixture by clamping to both the fence and the table and flip the stock over. Make sure the stock is pressed securely to the table and against the fence before clamping in place. Return the fence to a scoring pass location, then repeat the cuts on the tailboards. After completing the tail cuts, return the right angle fixture to the end of the fence and clamp in place. Remove the tails, flip the backing board over, and add the two pin boards. Tighten the hand screw clamp, then remove the spring clamp. Move the LS to the first B cut location which places the bit just outside the fence, 6B in this example, and make the cut. Now move the fence from one B cut to the next to complete the cuts across the full width of the pin boards. After completing the cuts on this end of your two pin boards, return the right angle fixture to the end of the fence and clamp to the fence and table. Allow the cutter to come to a complete stop before unclamping your two pieces. Now flip the stock and reclamp. Repeat the pin series of cuts across the full width of the boards. We'll now repeat the pin series of cuts, this time with the material face down on the table. Return your LS to the first pin cut on the template. With the router off, slide one of your pin boards to nest the cutter just inside the existing cut. We need to stop the cut just before the cutter contacts the end of the existing cut. Assemble the shop stop extender to the vertical stop arm as described in the instruction sheet included with the stop. Now clamp the stop to your fence with the extender as close as possible to the end of the board. Loosen the black thumb screws one eighth turn and then turn the micro adjust screw until the stop just touches the end of the board.
After adjustment, be sure to always tighten the two black thumb screws. Move the board away from the cutter, turn the router on, and using a good rubber sole push block, make the cut at both ends of both boards. Move the stock into the cut until you just touch the extender. Don't force the material against the stock. Keep the same face down on both boards throughout the entire series of cuts. Move your LS from one B cut to another to complete the cuts on each of your two pin boards. If you try to assemble your pin and tail pieces at this point, you would find that a small triangle of wood blocks the two pieces from sliding together. To complete the joint, all you need to do is whittle off this triangle of wood. This can be accomplished with a pocket knife, a razor knife, or a chisel as shown. Just follow the line of cut that was started straight back into the corner. Now you can assemble your pin and tail pieces for a perfect through dovetail. For this decorative joint, we're using the IDDD template with 6E as our center cut and 2 and 5 eighths inch stock. You'll need four pieces for the box sides and one piece of three quarter inch contrasting color stock about eight inches long to make the decorative trim section. Set the fence to a scoring pass position and slide the Lexan measuring scale to read zero under the cursor. Mark one edge of the two shorter pieces of stock and clamp them with a backing board to the face plate of your right angle fixture. The marked edge should always be placed against the fence when cutting these two pieces. You can use your centering board as the backing board. Tighten the wooden hand screw clamp securely. Beginning with a scoring pass, advance to the first A cut on the template, 8A in this case, in one or two passes. Now advance from one A cut to another across the width of your material.
Clamp the right angle fixture to your fence and table and flip the boards over. Remember, pencil edge to the fence. Press the boards downward and against the fence as you securely tighten the wooden hand screw clamp. Return the LS to a scoring pass position and repeat the A series of cuts across the width of your stock. To produce the trim section stock, set the LS to the first B cut that exposes the cutter in front of the fence, 5B in this case, and lock the carriage. Using a rubber sole push block, cut a groove along the entire length of the trim section material. Now move the LS from one B cut to the next to cut the grooves across the full width of your material. At your table saw, we'll use a miter gauge with a wooden subfence to cross cut the trim section stock. Place a cutoff from your box material against the blade and mark the subfence as shown. Advance the trim section stock about a sixteenth of an inch past the mark on the subfence and cross cut four pieces. Now, we'll glue the trim section pieces to the A-cut pieces cut earlier. Use a brush to apply glue to two of the trim section pieces. Then, apply glue to both ends of one of the mating A-cut pieces. Slide the trim section pieces onto each end of the mating piece and center so that the trim section overhangs each face of the larger piece slightly. We'll sand them flush later. Clamp the pieces together, then wipe off excess glue squeeze out and set aside. Repeat the glue up procedure for the remaining pieces and set aside to dry for about 30 minutes. At your sander, sand the trim sections flush with the face of the larger pieces. Reverse the piece direction from time to time to avoid over sanding one end.
After sanding both faces of both pieces, turn off the sander and use the stationary belt to remove any glue squeeze out or overhang of the trim section along the edges of the material. To be clear, we are sanding the dark trim section pieces flush with the edges of the lighter piece, not the other way around. You do not want to change the width or remove the pencil line from the larger piece. Back at the table saw, place a mark on the trim section 3 seconds of an inch from the ends of the tails on the A-cut pieces. Continuing the mark to the edge of the stock can be helpful for lining up the crosscut later on using your miter gauge with a zero clearance sub fence. Now, simply allow...